Hi, this video will show you how to configure Assembly's virtual line for using the new VMware vVault based environment. Um, the first step will be to simply configure the Assembly's virtual line as in the past. Um, create uh, a LUN and a target um, that you would like to use. Each LUN would be analogous to a new storage container. So in this case, I just have one uh, storage container created on my port. I simply then click on the container and go to the new uh, VVOL configuration tab in the GUI. Here you can set the various parameters for this container. The first is the size of the container. The Sandblaze Virtual Line uses system RAM as the backing storage for the data uh, for the container. Um, in this case we have 22 gigabytes free of system RAM that we can use for storage. We can then present a larger virtual size to the host um, using thin provisioning. So in this case, I'm going to present a 200 terabyte sized device to the host. Under that, I'll give it 16 gigabytes of writable space to store the actual data um, of the machines uh, that we create. Uh, since Sandblaze implements the VAAI spec, we can uh, support the built-in dedupe capability. So when machines are cloned, um, even though there's only 16 gigabytes, we can store multiple machines in there, uh, taking advantage of the data savings. You can then allocate the maximum number of VVOLs you want to create on this uh, container. So in this case, we recommend sending to something large, let's say 1,000, um, so you don't run out. So I'll have 1,000 VVOLs. Um, finally, at the bottom here, you can there's information about the VASA provider, which we'll come back to um, a little bit later when we get to vCenter and add the provider. Um, at this point, I can just click Apply, and it'll go ahead and create the container. Um, we'll now shift over to the vCenter side and see how to configure it um, under vCenter. Once the assembly side is configured for use in vVol mode, we can simply go into vCenter and verify first that the ESXi hosts can see the uh, storage that we've created. Um, so simply click on Hosts and Clusters under the vCenter web client. Um, select the host that you're using. Um, and then once it loads here, we can look under Storage Adapters. Um, and see if our devices have uh, shown up. Uh, this is the same procedure as in the past. Um, so we can go down to storage devices um, and you'll notice that here's that drive we created. Um, it worked out to be 190 terabytes. Um, you'll notice it says hardware acceleration supported so this means it supports the VAI extensions um, and it'll take advantage of uh, the built-in dedupe capabilities. Um, so once this is done, we're ready to add our storage provider um, to vCenter and then uh, enable some data stores and deploy a VM onto that uh, data store. Now that we've verified that the host can see our storage container, we'll go ahead and add our storage provider to vCenter. Um, so we'll go ahead and click here, um, go to Manage, and then Storage Providers. From here, we're going to have to go and add a new storage provider. So click this plus icon. And then we can just give it a name. We'll call it the Sandblaze VP. Um, we'll put our URL in from our um, previous screen here. So I cut and pasted it. So I can just edit it in. And then our username was also on the previous page. So we'll put those values in and then click OK. This will go ahead and register the provider um, with vCenter. And then we should see some information about the uh, status and um, what what endpoints are provided by this provider. In our case, we should have one since we created one container. OK, and you'll see it here now. It showed up Sandblaze VP and says our status is online. Um, if you scroll down here, you'll see kind of information about what version is supported. This supports two, the 2.0 version of the uh, VASA API, um, you know, as well as what kind of profiles are supported. Um, and then if you click on this, this shows the storage system details. So we have one storage, um, we'll call it an array, um, and it just gives you some information about it, what type of device it is, iSCSI, um, and so forth. So now that we've got the uh, storage provider added, we can now go ahead and create a data store that's VVOL capable and then deploy a VM onto that data store. Now that the provider has been added, we can go ahead and create a data store um, on our container that we're now exporting uh, to VMware. So we'll go ahead and right click on the um, host that we're using and just say new data store. 
So we'll go to New Data Store. This will go ahead and pull up the dialog to add a new data store. You'll now see there's a new option in here called a VVOL type data store in addition to the um, existing VMFS and NFS types. So we'll select VVOL um, and click Next. This will then go ahead and scan all your storage and find a VVOL capable uh, container. So we know that we have, uh, we added this, um, you know, our, our system here, I mean our container here. So we'll go ahead and select him. Um, and since he's the only VVOL capable device I have currently, he's the only one that shows up. So select him, you can give him a name, I'll just leave the default name and click next. Um, and then just click finish and this will go ahead and create a VVOL capable data store um, in that container. So now that we have this uh, uh, data store created, we can now deploy, a, create a VM on that, using that, um, uh, that data store. So again, we can just uh, uh, right click on here, go to new virtual machine. Um, and then we'll just click next, create a new machine. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, just click next again. Next, and then when we go to select storage, we can now pick this VVOL capable storage. Um, once it validates here, you'll see that it shows the type is uh, VVOL. Um, I have another storage device on here that's uh, the traditional VMFS type. Um, so now I can go ahead and select the device I want. I'll pick my new device right here. Um, click next. Um, just for the sake of the demo, we'll just pick all the defaults. And next, and finish. So let's go ahead and create um, uh, VVOLs under our, um, in that data store. Um, so now it's gone ahead and it's, you'll see it's building it over here. We can now go ahead and look at the VLAN side. Um, I believe it's created the uh, data stores now, so we just refresh. Um, yep, and you'll see that it's now using two VVOLs um, and it's consuming you know, nine megabytes of memory um, for, for, for the VM we had just created. Um, so at this point, you can go ahead and um, you know, use the machine as, as in the past.